Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews, an important video this time on batteries. Uh, not batteries to power your electric model, not your LiPos that drive your ESC that drives your brushless outrunner that turns your propeller or your ducted fan, but the batteries that quite often we use just to power the RC gear, you know, the receiver and the servos. In the case of nitro planes or gas planes or gliders or gas turbine planes, these batteries are critical because they are the batteries that make sure your radio keeps going, your servos have enough power, and everything works as you'd want it to. And the reason what um, catalyzed me into doing this video, the, the thing that made me do it was this large jet here, what's left of it, a very large turbine jet lodged in a tree behind my workshop, um, wasn't put there on purpose. I don't think the guy was trying to fly in safety. I think what happened was something went wrong. In fact, looking at discussion on the mailing list about this, it might be, I mean, the actual cause is not known for sure, but if I was to tell you that it had one of these in it, an, an AA pack, you know, AA nickel metal hydride battery pack to power all the digital servos and the receiver and all that sort of stuff in a large turbine powered model. I know there's a lot of you out there will be horrified, horrified to know that somebody used a, a, an AA pack in a model of this size, speed and weight because you shouldn't use a pack like this. Honestly, these packs, are, you know, they're fine. Well, they were fine maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, when we all flew, well, most of us flew long wire and, you know, we had pretty, you know, standard servos like this um, high-tech 45 in it or a Futaba S3000 series, you know, just a little four kilogram centimeter torque, just standard servos and these draw next to no current and receivers that were, they didn't reboot if, you, if the voltage dropped on the old long wire gear, they, when it came back up again, they'd just restart straight away. There was no delay, no rebooting, no sort of computer type stuff going on in there. It was really simple stuff. So you could get away with these really simple types of batteries, these relatively low power batteries. Unfortunately, what's happened is, that, you know, as the technology moves on, some people don't move with it. That's the reason I've, one of the reasons I've started this YouTube channel is I need to keep people informed. Let people know that, hey, you know, it's not the 1990s anymore. Well, you've got to move forward because, as I say, these packs work just fine if you're using low power servos and radio gear that doesn't reboot if the voltage drops too low, like the modern 2.4 gear. You can use these, they're fine, nothing's changed, they haven't stopped working, but if you're going to build yourself a big powerful jet and you're going to put high torque digital servos in there then, you need to throw these in the rubbish bin because what you're going to need is something with a lot more uh, ability to deliver current. Now, these little servos here, they'll draw a couple hundred milliamps if you're lucky. When you get into the modern high torque, high speed servos, like, you know, the, whether it's a brand name one or it's a more, uh, more economically priced Chinese one like this, these things can draw amps. They can draw four or five times the current of one of these older servos, these lower servos. And of course, jets tend to have more servos as well. Bigger planes have bigger servos, and often they have more of them. With your little four-channel trainer, you might have four servos. You know, one for throttle, one for elevator, one for ailerons, one for rudder. You get into the area of these big planes, you're probably going to have a servo for each aileron. You're going to have a, um, probably have flaps with a couple of servos for your flaps. You're going to have a steerable nose leg. That'll probably have a separate servo. You're going to have servos for elevator, rudder, and who knows what else. So suddenly, not only have you got servos that can draw four or five times the current, but you've got twice as many of them. So whereas this little battery pack here was able to cope quite nicely with the relatively light loads of a, you know, a 40 size trainer flying with long wire gear four or five years ago, that is not gonna cope at all with all this modern technology. So what should you use in your bigger, faster, more powerful, heavier models with their fancy high torque digital servos? Well, you've gotta go, really lithium has changed the game. Lithium batteries have completely changed the world. I mean, until the lithium batteries came along, electric power for models was pretty much unheard of. You could do it, but you weren't getting any performance. It was sort of, people really only did it because they could do it. Or there were some hotliner type craft which were loaded up with high powered nickel cadmium batteries and flew for a very short period of time and got incredibly hot, but it certainly wasn't a mainstream part of the hobby. Then of course the good old LiPo came along and everything changed. Now we had heaps of power and a small lightweight package, so we could go electric. And of course, this lithium technology is not just LiPos, we've also got things like these. This is the, the A123 batteries. And I've already done a video on this channel showing you how to build your own receiver pack out of an A123, pair of A123 cells, whether it's the big ones or the little ones. And these were, and still are to some degree, the, you know, the best option for this, for, certainly for jets, something like that. 
um, they're proven, well proven. They're robust physically and electrically, and um, they can deliver enormous amounts of power for their size, enormously high current. So when all those high torque digital servos are moving at once, these don't blink, they just keep pushing the power out. And that's important. Um, the other option is you can use a LiPo like this. But these are high voltage. I mean, even a two cell one is, is about 7.2 volts nominal. They come off the charger at over eight volts. So a lot of the you know, gear that's out there now won't handle eight volts. A lot of the servos you buy, they're rated for five or six volts. They won't handle eight, they'll just burn out. Now you can get high voltage servos coming onto the market, high voltage servos that will work with two cell LiPos. That's good, that's great. You know, I mean, but not everyone has them. And uh, you know, sometimes they're a little more expensive. And so a lot of people say, well, if I'm gonna use a LiPo, I'm going to use one of these, a battery eliminator circuit, a BEC. And I say, no, nah, I wouldn't bother. If you have to use a BEC, if you wanna use a lithium polymer battery to run your RC gear, but your RC, RC gear won't handle two cells directly, and you wanna use a BEC, then I'd really reconsider that because one of the secrets to safe flying is keep it simple. Every time you put something else in the model, it's something else to go wrong. So if you've got a battery, connected to a BEC, connected to your receiver, then if the BEC fails, everything stops. And I mean, these are, they come in a wide range of qualities and shapes and sizes. You can get generics like this, which are, you know, they work, but can you really trust them? You can get branded ones like this, which come in a wide range of, you know, sizes and things. They're branded. Um, you can get high quality ones, ones that have got really expensive price tags. And generally speaking, they use the same components. The difference is in probably, quality control after assembly, and maybe they use better quality components, like the capacitors are probably lower ESR, I'll tell you what that is in a later video, um, which means basically the, the better one, the more expensive ones usually, but not always work better, but even then there's no guarantees. If something goes wrong, for example, and a servo draws too much current, it can cause the BEC to shut down. So one faulty servo can bring down your whole RC system, because these can only pass so much current from your LiPo to your receiver. If a servo fails, draws an inordinately large amount of current, these can generally deliver you know, a maximum of three or five, or in the case of a big one, eight amps. Now a short-circuited servo can draw tens of amps. So what happens? This blows up or shuts down and all your radio stops working. So the preferred option for me is to use either gear that will work with a two-cell LiPo and use a two-cell LiPo, so you eliminate this BEC, or you can use this, which is the same as your A123 technology, almost. Your A123 is proven. This is your lithium iron phosphate, or LIFE batteries as they're called. These use the same chemistry as the A123s, but not the same mechanical type of construction. So they have a lot of the benefits of the A123, but you know, they don't quite have the same ability to deliver current. But having said that, they'll deliver far more current than you'll ever need. So I, I'm starting to use these quite a bit now, even instead of the A123s. I mean, these are so small, they're so cheap. For example, in New Zealand here, this battery will cost you around about $50. 50 bucks for a 19, 90s technology battery that won't power anything much, won't you know, enable you to reliably fly anything much bigger than a 40 size trainer. This will cost you 10 bucks and it'll do a much better job. So what do you do? I mean, obviously you're gonna go for the new technology, but the problem is, probably as in the case of this jet, the, the pilot was actually quite surprised to learn that this wasn't up to the task. He had no idea. You know, he's been using these for years. So why wouldn't they work in this big, powerful jet? He's only recently got into jets. So why wouldn't they work in this big jet? Well, this is one of the problems. Technology changes, demands on that technology change. You've got to keep up with it. And that's why I'm here, of course, to try and educate people. And so I want people to take a good look at the batteries they're using in their models and decide, hey, is it time I use something a little bit better? Now, um, these LIFE batteries, they're great. I use them a lot, haven't had any failures. But like all batteries, you've got to take care of them. Um, you've got to make sure if you've had a, if you're just coming like spring in the Northern Hemisphere now, if you're just getting your models out and you want to go for a fly, most of the four button chargers have a cycle capability. Throw your battery, do a full cycle on it. Just make sure that over the winter it hasn't, you know, suddenly lost a whole lot of capacity. And that's very important because if your battery goes flat, doesn't matter what type it is, you've lost control. So there you go. Um, a little bit about batteries. As I say, my preference at the moment is these, because I've got a lot of gear I already had, which only runs on five or six volts. So to use a LiPo, I'd have to use one of these, and I don't like putting extra points of failure in my planes. There you go, if you've got any questions, put them on the bottom of the video. If you have any comments, put them there too. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about batteries and what's the right one and what's the right size and what's the right chemistry, then you can simply ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer the questions and maybe There'll be some more videos coming on this very, very important topic. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.